Buenos dias, mis amigos. Point number four is going to be about Noah's flood. All right, so we know that in the in the days of Noah before the flood, that the whole earth was filled with wickedness. Let's read uh, verse 5 here. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So the whole earth was full of wickedness. Now, what does Jesus say in relation to to his coming when the end of the world occurs at his coming let's read uh, let's read from uh, Luke 17 and he says um, as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Jesus. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, it's interesting here because as it was in the days of Noah, so also shall it be in the days of the Son of Man when Jesus comes. When Jesus comes, the whole earth will be full of wickedness. And every imagination of the thoughts of man in his heart is only evil continually. So what we're seeing today is very similar to what was going on in the days of Noah before the flood. Now, of course, you know, this is my very strong opinion, but it is just my opinion that in the days of Noah, men were living 12 times longer, hundreds of years. And so this evilness was uh, sort of on a fast track. Because men were living longer, evil increased faster. And so God put it into it and said, okay, now you're going to live 70 years, 80 if uh, in strength. Okay. So now it's cut down by a 12th, basically. Okay. So now it's still uh, on a track of wickedness to, and that, that wickedness is increasing just not at the fast pace that it was before in the days before the flood all right and then of course uh think it's not exactly the same because of before the flood you know before the flood there was uh every opportunity really that man could ever ask for to do it on his own to create this perfect world, if you will, and to live righteous lives. And they screwed it up big time. All right, and so then there's a sort of a reset, and then God gives us laws to abide by. All right, here's the law. Now, here, here you go. You got another opportunity to live righteous lives, and of course, we screwed that up seven ways to Sunday. All right, and so that's the point, really, is that we need a savior. All right, and that goes all the way back to Genesis three, verse fifteen. But it's interesting to me because. The way it is now is very similar to the way it was back in the days of Noah. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, and they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire 
and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when Jesus is revealed. All right, so keep in mind also in the days of Noah, there was only eight souls saved. Here, I better show you. And then also in the days, here, let me slow down here just a little bit. In 1 Peter chapter 3, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God awaited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Eight souls. Now, this is interesting to me, this wherein few. We also read that in in Matthew 7. So let's go to that. I want to find something very similar to that phrase few. Here in starting verse 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life. And few there be that find it. Now, we can draw a parallel with this word few, there be that find it, with what we read here in first peter chapter 3 where in few that is eight souls were saved by water now of course uh, in matthew 24 we read that except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened so in other words if God let things play out the way they are, there would come a point where there'd be nobody saved. All right, so there are there will be very very few people saved that are still alive, right? That are still alive when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and of course in Luke chapter 18 we read this yeah I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man comes shall he find faith on the earth well I would argue with God that there has to be two people saved in order for his word to be true but there doesn't have to be more than two you think um, the reason why I say there has to be two is First Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, Then we which are alive and remain shall be cut up together. We indicates, uh, it's plural, indicates at least two. All right, but you consider in the days of a lot, when Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about were destroyed by fire, there wasn't even ten righteous there weren't even ten righteous in the days of Noah. No, there was only eight souls saved. And then the question is asked, shall I find faith on the earth? So there's not going to be very many people that are still alive, that are still saved, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, just as there was not very many people alive when or I'm sorry there was not very many people saved when the flood came in the days of Noah and destroyed them all